want to talk to us about our assignment and also our assignment, how that applies to, to each one of us. And I, I want to start here uh, with uh, the teaching from Jesus uh, when he said, lift up your eyes. So I want to talk about vision and strategy. Jesus said, there, do not say there are still four months until the harvest. I tell you, lift up your eyes, look at the fields for they are ripe for harvest. So, of course, we're very familiar with that scripture. However, I want us to understand that there's not more than vision, but there's also strategy that the Lord gives because um, in the past, almost all of us in this room would remember that uh, we had a vision started in maybe 2013, somewhere in there, to grow to a thousand churches by the year 2020. We, the whole family gathered around that, and there was strategies that came out. Everybody owned that, which was just, just totally amazing. And uh, Larry talks about this entering into, it's now the third chapter, chapter is the terminology we're using, like this is the third chapter, and I'm not here to present any vision, I'm just here to take the lid off of it, to cause us to think strategically, um, because it's interesting, we know when Jesus used the term apostle, he used a military term. It was a military term of the day, and so me of and darkness is not going to willingly give up ground as to the kingdom advancing. There's going to be a struggle. There's going to be. It, it's going to take some strategy. It's going to take some teams and and all of this to so that it, so that it can advance. Uh, I love what some of our leaders in India are doing. Uh, we have uh, Prince Thomas in the north of India, and one of his strategies is drilling wells. They'll just go right in and. You we need some money, we're going to raise some money, we're going to drill a well, we're going to send a missionary, and within a month or two, there's a church planted in that village in the north of India, and one right after another, well drilling, uh, handing out food, there's also, uh, they do a children's, uh, like a church plant around the children's school, because for there's no schools, so they start a school, and of course, all the children come, and then their parent comes, and there's a missionary there, and there's a church plant there. Uh, we heard yesterday from Grace, Grace and Sammy in uh, another part of India. Um, they've been very successful with the Jesus film. It's a strategy. It's developed strategy, and, and I love the way Sammy does that because he'll show the film until Jesus heals the sick person. Then he stops the film and prays for the sick, right, right there. Like, and the sick get healed, and then he starts the movie again and gets to the resurrection, and he stops it again, you know, and gives an altar call and so forth. So there's certain strategies that, that we're developing. And so what is this prophetic vision that God might have for us? So there's this uh, game that was created in North America where grown men and women... Uh, Get on ice skates and on ice try to push each other over for the purpose of getting this little round thing into a net. And uh, it's called ice hockey. We will we'll credit, credit our Canadian friends with developing this sport in 1872, now popular in the United States and also in, in Europe, I would say, as well. And uh, the, what most people would consider to be the greatest hockey player of all time, Wayne Gretzky, had a saying. This was the, the key to to his success was, I skate to where the puck is going, not to where it is. Became the greatest, one, one of the greatest hockey players of all time. I skate to where the puck is going, not to where it is. So for us, can we look over the horizon to see where the kingdom is growing and how the world is changing. I'm actually going to dig into, so I have a slide here. I don't want to go too fast through the slides because I want you to really digest them. Uh, Dr. Ralph Winters from the U.S. Center for World Mission. Now, I'm just compiling this. I'm not a missions, you know, uh, strategist or st exactly necessarily. But he liked to chronicle the Great Commission with it, he, what he called the diminishing task. And so he started in A.D. 100, and he, he said there's... 360 basically, I'll say, non-believers for every believer. And he chronicled this up through history to 270 to 85. You can see the progression where uh, he's looking at the ratio of 
non-believers to believers. And the last, it was actually stopped in 2010. And in 2010, there was seven non-believers for every believer in the world. This is looking at the whole world. I believe now, right now, most people would say the number, number is around five. Just looking at the world population. So... Having said that, the problem, the big challenge here is the hardest tasks are for last, the hardest places to reach, but another problem is the population is growing. (laughs) It's a moving target, okay? So that makes it more difficult because you're trying to catch up. And, 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 And so as population is growing, that becomes a moving target. Has anybody ever shot at, when you're, you're, you're hunting, shot an animal that's running? Like, it's difficult. It's very difficult, and mostly if you're successful, it's luck, okay? Just saying that, uh, you know, you can talk about all, you know, tell all your stories you want, but it's mostly luck, <laughs> all right? So that's our significant challenge is that the population of the world up until what we, until a year or two ago, we had projections the world's population was going to continue to grow, but now sociologists, demographics, as they're studied, current birth rates are st- or indicate the world's population is expected to stop growing and decline. Not only is our target stop running away, it's stopping and coming back. It's like moving back. So again, it's a very difficult task. I don't mean to minimize But what we're finding is that, um, and here's a graph that would pretty much demonstrate that. Again, I just don't want to go too fast because I want you to really dissolve these things and or kind of, you know, really be, have a chance to look and check. But by the, some people say by 2100, it depends on what stats, if it's UN stats or the Pew Charitable Trust, some places they'll say as early as 2050 or 2060, the world population will peak out at 10 and then eventually it, it'll come down to uh, 8 8.8 billion. So the world is changing, and not only is it changing, I have some more data here we could look at, or I'll post the, post the PowerPoint so you can see it and, and check into it. Not, uh, not only is it slowing down, so, but it's important that we know where that's happening. So if we looked at the world right now in general figures, each of these icons, we show one icon which would represent a billion people in North America, North and South America, roughly a, a billion people, roughly a little less than a billion people in Europe, roughly a little over a billion people in Africa, and four billion people in Asia. Now, we know that and we're excited. We have good things happening in India and, and whatnot. But there's the, as the po- demographics change, there's a pretty drastic change that's going to happen. Now, I want to leave this slide up here for a little bit because this is a dynamic slide. And it actually, it actually shows um, how the population is right now, 2020, what the world population is. But look what happens to these circles. Asia gets bigger, but then it starts to decline. North America stays about the same. There's a little bit of immigration uh, that causes population growth. Latin America stays the same. But look what happens to Africa. You, You can look at that here for a moment while I go on. The projections are, this is based on current birth rates, projections are that Africa's 1.3 billion people in the next 50 years will not be 2.3, not be 3.3, but will be 4.3 billion people in Africa. Isn't that mind-boggling? So the demographic, so now where is the puck going in the world? for the Dove family. Like we can see over the horizon here, it might change, but we can see that there's going to be some specific demographics changes in the world and maybe we can put some strategy into targeting specific areas of the world and maybe that will help us to understand our assignment but also our assignment, our part uh, to play. So I'm going to, I think you can can kind of see what's happening here. Um, Africa is where it is. There you go. Um, Now this I want to draw your attention to. Looks very complex. These are the top 10 most populous countries in 1950, in 2020, and in 2100. So 
again, some people say 2100, some people say 2050, that this demographic change, it's all just a matter of time how quickly it's going to change. But the, they all say the same result is coming. What you see is a, from 1950, the most, the most populous countries are dropping out of the top 10. You see, um, and interestingly enough, well, I'll just skip over that for the moment. We see that in tw 21, by 2100, of course, actually in the next few years, India is going to buy. Look at these gold color countries. By the end of this population surge, five of the ten most populous countries are going to be where? Africa. How about that? And then let's just look specifically um, because this is the percent of growth over this time period. Let's say, let's just say 60 or 70 years. And we see different countries and the percent of growth, actually Ni not Niger, but Nigeria will be the, like number three by that time. And, but interesting enough, if we start at the top and scan down there, we see Burundi, right? Dub is in Burundi, is that right? Yeah, there we go. We see Congo, wait. I'm looking at you now. Dove is in Congo. Oh, yeah, Diane says. Then down at the bottom, we, hey, Mozambique. <laughs> we have a beachhead. Thank you, Jose. Oh, we're in, oh, yes, we're, of course, in Tanzania as well. Yes, for sure. So, so we're in these, but then there's other countries. Again, just saying, I'm not putting a proposal on the table or <laughs> signing people up for anything. I'm just saying, let's look and see what the Lord might be saying. And, uh, and, and also, uh, let's see what, what, what he might be saying to us and also what he might be saying to us as a family. Uh, there's other projections here. Um, Latin America is becoming more and more Christian all the time. And training is needed. And I'll just end with this. Our target is slowing. Where is the puck going? Shall we proceed? There you go. The third chapter.